Introduction Everyone struggles with some form of anxiety or panic at least once in their life. There isn't a clear way to handle these struggles, and humankind wasn't born with a manual. Years of trying to understand what exactly happens in the brain during an episode of anxiety, or when we're feeling depressed, has led to numerous treatments by both therapists and general practitioners. Thankfully, all of their research and endless studies of people have led to more wholesome treatments that can resolve the root of the problem. As opposed to medication, which can often mask symptoms but never truly resolve the core issues, cognitive behavioral therapy, also referred to as CBT, retrains the brain to handle life in a new light. CBT is a means to help people with behavioral and physiological struggles overcome instances of anxiety and depression, as well as other mental disorders. With specific techniques, ones aimed at encouraging the person struggling with these mental afflictions, people learn to help themselves out of stressful situations with ease. In time, and with the help of cognitive behavioral therapy, sufferers begin to change their behavior as though it was never there before. In this book, we will discuss the science behind CBT, as well as the techniques that make it so successful. We'll identify why you're thinking and feeling the way that you are as we work to overcome the stresses that are causing you problems in your mental health. For us to move forward and keep a bright outlook on tomorrow, we must first delve into the science behind CBT and exactly how it is going to help you open your eyes to a future without fear and panic. Chapter 1. What is Cognitive Behavioral Therapy? Cognitive Behavioral Therapy has been studied as well as clinically tested with great advances in recent years. This form of therapy has shown to be more effective than certain medications, as well as other types of psychological therapy. CBT encompasses several different forms of therapy, which we'll get into later in this book. Because a person is taught, with the help of CBT, to retrain their brains and learn to replace their negative thoughts with much healthier ones, they can eventually move past their traumas and heal from various mental afflictions. A quick look at the history of CBT. Cognitive behavioral therapy has its roots in the early 20th century. With conditioning studies conducted by Rosalie Rayner and John B. Watson, the groundwork for psychological therapy began. This husband and wife team of psychologists built their career around the relations between the thoughts and feelings that a person has and the behavior that is informed by them. Albert Ellis, an American psychologist, developed the first known cognitive psychotherapy that he called rational emotive behavioral therapy. While Ellis was working on his theories, other psychotherapists were designing their own. In the 1960s, these studies merged as behavior and cognitive therapy gained traction in the medical community. Under the umbrella term cognitive therapy, therapists began using the different models from those previous and numerous studies of early psychologists and psychotherapists. The amalgam of knowledge over years of research allowed for a breakthrough in both cognitive and behavioral therapy. The evidence was everywhere. Doctors now knew that their patients were suffering from their own thoughts and emotions. The doctors could help their patients move past their traumas and into a healthier and happier life. What does cognitive behavioral therapy mean for healing? Quite basically, cognitive behavioral therapy is the relationship between behaviors and thoughts. We all have stressful thoughts from time to time, and we have our own ways of dealing with them. These thoughts might originate as negative thoughts, or they could come from self-doubt and fear. When these thoughts are allowed to live and breathe and take hold in our imagination, we feel anxious and worried. 
we begin to second guess ourselves and think that we're failing at not just the small stuff, but sometimes the big stuff. The worst part is that if we let these thoughts hold us for too long, it gets harder and harder to get rid of them. With prolonged anxiety and self doubt, we can easily slip into depression. Depression has many faces, and some people who are dealing with episodes of depression may not even realize that that is why they are feeling the way they feel. At its heart, depression causes people to feel like they have no reason to get up and go about their day. It can take the most cheerful person and cause them grief from seemingly nowhere. Again, this can come from self doubt, as our thoughts somehow convince us that we are less worthy of the things we have and the relationships we hold than we really are. It isn't a quick overnight process, but you can retrain your brain to think in different ways. And with practice and dedication, you will move past your negative thoughts and to find happiness. The techniques for cognitive behavioral therapy are proven time and time again. They not only help with anxiety and depression, but they can also help with phobias, eating disorders, and anger issues. What to expect from cognitive behavioral therapy? During cognitive behavioral therapy, you'll go through starting phases as you work toward replacing your negative thoughts and feelings with healthier ones. To begin with, you'll need to understand what it is that's causing you distress, and then you'll move toward recognizing what it is you'll need in order to overcome this distress. In cognitive behavioral therapy, you can expect to experience the following process. An assessment of your life and the stressors that caused you suffering. You'll also make note of the feelings and emotions that you experience when you're suffering. Finally, you'll include the behaviors that are associated with these stressors. And more importantly, the ones you wish to change. The redefining of the behaviors and feelings that stem from unwanted thoughts. This step is the core of cognitive behavioral therapy, as it builds the process necessary to identify and overcome these thoughts. This step is comprehensive and will be the bulk of your work in using CBT. A complete review of your skills. Everyone has the skills to overcome negativity and become positive and happy individuals. Some of us need extra work on specific skills, while some people need to learn new skills entirely. This step will allow you to identify what you are already capable of as you recognize your areas of improvement. The application of the skills you've learned, as well as the techniques to help you rise above negative thoughts. This is the final step in cognitive behavioral therapy, and it is where you will learn to directly apply all of your knowledge to real-world instances. At any of these steps, you may notice that your life is already changing. It could happen within the first step, as you begin to realize exactly why you're doing the things you're doing and the feelings that are caused by these behaviors. Sometimes, we are not aware that we are stressed out and acting angrily, for example, simply because of our own thoughts. This early awareness, as you pinpoint the relationship between your thoughts and your behaviors, is monumental in your overall recovery. As you get further toward the end of your therapy, your day-to-day -day life will most definitely be a happier and healthier one. The benefits that come with cognitive behavioral therapy are not limited to the mind. You'll discover physical benefits as well, giving you more confidence and optimism as you strive for a life full of happiness. As we close this chapter, Let's review what cognitive behavioral therapy truly is and how it can help you through your struggles. It is important to understand that, even though this form of therapy can help you in countless ways, it will take work on your part as well to recover and move past what is holding you back. Cognitive behavioral therapy has its roots in psychological theory dating back to the early 1900s. CBT enables you to identify the thoughts that are causing you stress and worry. With the techniques used in CBT, you'll learn to change the way you think, and thus, 
change your behavior. CBT is a process that requires you to be honest about what it is you want to change in your life. Before we get into specific techniques, we need to fully understand how our thoughts affect our behaviors and why each of us reacts to certain things in different ways. In the next chapter, we'll take a deeper look at negative and toxic thoughts, and we'll take our first step to recondition our brains to think positively as we start on our path toward happiness. Chapter 2. Identifying Negative Thoughts We've all had them. Negative thoughts that seem to come out of nowhere and take over our minds. It's an unfortunate side effect of being human, asking the what if and why questions that always seem to elude us. Because our brains like to guess certain situations and make assumptions, we can easily fall into the trap of believing our assumptions with little regard to the truth. We might believe, for example, that since we had one bad incident during a job interview, that means we will never land a new job. These thoughts can be minor and impact you for a brief moment, or they can affect most of what you do throughout your day. When we allow ourselves to be controlled by our negative thoughts, they can take a deeper hold and bleed into our weeks and months and years. Over time, this repeated cycle of worry, fear, and self-doubt only provides us with worsening anxiety as we fall into a depression. Resolving these thoughts is no easy task, but by taking it one step at a time and focusing on the immediate, most important stage of your process within cognitive behavioral therapy, you can work toward an overall goal of better health, both physically and mentally. Toxic Thoughts As I've already discussed, every person will deal with anxiety and negativity at least once in their life. Many people deal with it every day. These negative thoughts, which stem from a false belief in yourself, are considered toxic in nature. They infect you when they spread like a virus from your mind to your heart and to the rest of your body as you become weaker and less able to fight them off. The way we think can affect so many aspects of our lives, not just how we feel in any given moment. Allowing toxic thoughts to exist and linger can cause trouble sleeping as well as digestive issues. These two alone can make you feel and look as though you're aging faster than you should be. Toxic thoughts truly are toxic in every form, as they will eventually disrupt your body's natural ability to heal itself by using sleep and nutrients. This can cause dull skin, achiness, and a general sense of lethargy. Why we have negative thoughts. Our negative thoughts stem from either a relationship to something that has happened in the past or the idea that something is guaranteed to happen in the near future. This, again, is our human nature overgeneralizing situations by assuming an outcome whether or not we have basis to believe it. These toxic thoughts often have nothing to do with what is presently happening. Our minds are making up a reality that simply fails to take hold. One very simple trick that you can start right now in order to help clear away the thoughts and focus on the present moment is to be mindful. I know that sounds like common sense, but in truth, we are rarely mindful of our present state when dealing with stressors. In a heartbeat, we shift our focus from what we're dealing with because of a stressor, and we begin to concentrate on an abstract view of our current situation. There are endless outcomes possible for every situation you find yourself in. You have to accept the fact that you cannot tell the future and you will not be able to know what will happen. And that is perfectly fine. We aren't meant to know our futures. We're meant to live them. Being mindful of your present state and what you're handling in this very moment is how you live. Worrying about the future and the what-ifs will not help you resolve your current problems and find that accomplished feeling that so many of us seek. 
without feeling like we've accomplished things throughout our day, most commonly by allowing our thoughts to take hold of our actions as we drift from the present state, we're left with regret and self-doubt. Stay mindful and present. Keep yourself in the present moment as you remove the worrisome thoughts about the future and, in turn, prevent the toxic thoughts from taking hold. Mindfulness is a beautiful technique that can help you fight off your false beliefs and self-doubts as you work toward building good habits in your daily life. Cognitive behavioral therapy is aimed at retraining your thought patterns so that you can overcome behavioral and mental disorders. Some of these disorders stem from a lack of peace within ourselves and who we truly are. Use these techniques to give yourself a break and find that peace so that you can accept yourself and feel positive throughout your day. Focus on one thing. It can be difficult, especially when you're just starting out cognitive behavioral therapy. But in order to be mindful and bring yourself back to the present moment, you can start by focusing on one thing at a time. In our busy lives, we are often dealing with multiple things at once. It could be that you have three kids all clamoring for your attention, dinner is cooking on the stove, and someone is knocking at the door. All these things happening at one time can easily cause stress and anxiety. It wouldn't take long for any rational person to feel overwhelmed and under pressure. In a situation like this, your thoughts could quickly take hold as you wonder just who it is that's knocking at the door. Is it urgent? Is it vital? And what about dinner? If you stop giving your kids attention, will you burn the food? Your toxic thoughts are only just the beginning in a situation like this. You're not only worried about the burnt food, you're also worried that your family will criticize your cooking once they're eating the food. You may even start wondering if you're giving them the right nutrition. One thought can lead to another, and before long, you're lost in a sea of strange yet harmful thoughts. Instead of allowing your mind to drift off as you work to handle multiple things at once, you first need to identify the most important thing. Being mindful is not only about finding your focus in the present state, but also about knowing your own limitations. For this reason, once you identify the one item that needs your immediate focus, you can delegate the rest. In this example, as long as your children are fine, they only want your attention, and they are not in an emergency situation that must be dealt with, you can send them off to play. The kitchen is a place for cooking and eating, not for loud noises and rambunctiousness. An older child or an adult can answer the door, and if you aren't expecting anyone, it's even okay that you don't answer the door. The food that is cooking is the most important task. It's also fine if a little bit of it becomes overdone. The point is that you have brought yourself into the present moment by focusing on the one thing that needs your attention above all else. Don't allow yourself to think about what will happen if you step away from the stove. And don't worry about how your family will receive your cooking. Those things do not matter at this time. Your focus needs to be on preparing dinner. If you have questions about the meal, more specifically about how it tastes or the nutritional value of it, those thoughts can be addressed later while you're eating or even while you're meal planning for the following week. Slow down. It is no secret that our daily lives are often a hustle of tasks and appointments that must be met. We feel ragged and stretched thin as we work to accomplish everything we've set before ourselves. Learning to slow down and process one thing at a time is the key to allowing yourself to become mindful of your current actions. Slowing down is not easy, especially when we are accustomed to a lifestyle full of engaging activities. Enjoying your moments instead of flying through them only to reminisce about the brevity of it all is the simplest way to find happiness throughout your day. 
Making time in our busy schedules can only be done when we properly learn to effectively manage our time. This includes carving out sections of your day for what is important to you, as well as what must be handled in both your career and your personal life. Our responsibilities can sometimes overwhelm us, but when we make adequate time to handle them, we not only accomplish what we set out to do, but we also find satisfaction and contentment in the people we are becoming. You can easily slow down your life and bring yourself to the present by creating a list of things that are most important and most urgent throughout the days of your week. With this list, you can prioritize your day so that you accomplish the things that must be done before you take time for the fun stuff, which can often eat up our time. It's not that you shouldn't have fun throughout your day, but by staying on task and finishing what must be done, you've not only gotten rid of a stressor, but you have also given yourself a decent amount of confidence. Following your schedule as closely as possible, day after day and into the weeks and months ahead, will start to make you feel like you are taking on the world and succeeding. This small step can create massive and lasting positivity, not just in your thoughts, but also in your physical health. You may discover that you have more time for yourself and for the things that make you feel good. Instead of wasting time by doing activities that do not benefit you or hinder your current goals, you'll be finishing things one by one as you build upon your success. From here, the sky's the limit. Process your feelings. There are times when what we are feeling is clearly evident, but there are also times when we struggle to identify truly how we feel. Remaining mindful of your present state requires that you understand what you're feeling in that very moment, as well as why you feel this way. This will allow you to process your feelings in a healthy way so that they don't turn into toxic thoughts. When we begin to feel overwhelmed and stressed, we quickly start to think negatively. Those terrible what-ifs pop into our heads, like a horde of buffaloes, stampeding whatever positivity we were holding on to. It's important to remember that everyone feels stressed, and they often feel it multiple times throughout the day. It's how we handle our stress and our immediate feelings and emotions that directly result in our thoughts and their accompanying behaviors. With cognitive behavioral therapy, we will learn to address those thoughts immediately and restructure them so they do not become toxic and infect us, which would most likely ruin our day. Being mindful allows you to use a little piece of this cognitive behavioral therapy almost effortlessly. Your feelings and thoughts are tied to your emotions, and they make up a web of this abstract reality that we cannot see or touch. This can make it hard to understand what we, as well as other people, are feeling and thinking. But you can overcome this by being honest with yourself and accepting of your feelings. Humanity has developed many ways to become better than the generations that came before. And unfortunately, one of these methods is to keep our feelings and emotions buried deep inside. While we may have thought at some point that this made us stronger, not showing any weakness has caused a great amount of suffering. Often, we aren't true to ourselves and how we are feeling at any given moment. This is a prime breeding ground for toxic thoughts. We begin to question what others would think of us if we showed weakness, and we worry if that could impede our relationships or our careers. It's time to get past that stigma and allow yourself to feel the emotions that you're feeling. Granting yourself the space and time to process what you're feeling in the very moment that you feel it is how you come to understand yourself. This allows you to know what you are capable of on your own, as well as what you need help with. And in order to improve your life and find that happiness, you have to be able to admit what it is you cannot do on your own. Know your limitations. As we've discussed, 
Knowing your limitations will allow you to stay in your present state as you keep those negative thoughts at bay. Taking on more than you know you're capable of will only cause you stress and anxiety as you work endlessly to accomplish things that are not within your means. This anxiety, which stems from a fear of failing, can stay with you for days and weeks, especially if you continue to pile on other tasks to your already busy schedule. Unfortunately, this extended anxiety can push you into an episode of depression where you may want to give up on your pursuits and fail to accomplish anything at all. By simply understanding what it is you can and cannot do and being honest with yourself and your abilities, you're preventing hours of stress and fear. Without overwhelming yourself, you'll completely remove this potential anxiety and you'll never have to face the fear of failure. The first thing you can do is understand and accept the fact that not everybody is good at everything, and we all have our strengths and weaknesses. There are things you can improve upon with practice and training, and you should never doubt your ability to learn new skills. But you must be real about this. Do not expect yourself to be able to do everything that must be done without the help of others. And even if you can accomplish something, If you find that you're squeezed on time and you know that it's only going to overwhelm you and cause you toxic thoughts about your capabilities, do not hesitate to reach for help. Do not look at your limitations as weaknesses. This is nothing more than a false belief. Your limitations provide a boundary for which you can strengthen what you're good at and find happiness with what you have. Limitations give us structure as they form our personal relationships as much as our career successes. Being truthful about what you know you can handle versus what you want to handle is the beginning of finding peace with yourself. Let's take a moment to review everything we've discussed so far in identifying your negative thoughts. Remember that these are the ones you get immediately when you start to doubt yourself and your capabilities in any given situation. We have negative thoughts because we fear that we aren't good enough compared to others around us. Becoming mindful and present in the moment allows us to slow down and find what is most important. Learning to properly process your feelings will enable you to move past the toxicity that your false belief of self is causing. And understanding our limitations gives us insight into who we truly are and what we can and cannot handle. In our next chapter, we'll discuss the reasons behind how you feel and why those feelings are causing you to think negatively. This is all part of the first step of cognitive behavioral therapy as we start to take a deeper look at not just the actions and behaviors you wish to change, but the reasons behind them. Chapter 3. The Behaviors That Come From Our Negative Thoughts We all understand that negative thoughts can cause a repercussion of ailments throughout our minds and bodies. This is due to the fact that our feelings and emotions stem directly from our thoughts. When we are thinking negatively, we start to feel negatively, and our emotions pay the price. Similarly, our behaviors are influenced by our feelings, so you can see where our thoughts can cause negative behaviors. This is exactly the point of cognitive behavioral therapy. We identify the thoughts that are causing you struggles throughout all aspects of your life, and then we work to replace them with reinforcing thoughts that give you confidence and positivity. When we begin to think better thoughts about ourselves and our situations, we are able to act accordingly and have a brighter outlook on not just our day, but our entire lives. The struggles that people face when they are dealing with negative thoughts can often be immense. It might be very difficult for someone to overcome these thoughts, especially without therapies such as CBT, and when they get stuck in a cycle of negative thoughts and unwanted behaviors, 
everything truly feels like a downward spiral. The behaviors that can affect someone's daily routine, as well as social gatherings, are the ones that we don't want to experience. But it is as though we have no choice. When fear and guilt take over, we feel anxious, and within seconds, we begin acting in ways we don't mean. Sometimes, these behaviors are not as noticeable as we might believe, but that doesn't mean we don't feel anxious about them. Other behaviors might be bolder, and these can cause us great embarrassment, and over time, they may lead to depression. This is why cognitive behavioral therapy is so critical during these situations. We need to grab a hold of our toxic thoughts before they grab a hold of us, and we need to stop them in their tracks. Let's take a closer look at certain behaviors that you may want to stop in your own life, as well as where they stem from. Restlessness and Irritability Being anxious can easily lead to restlessness and irritability. These two traits are quite common among people who suffer from anxiety, and they are behaviors that no one likes to experience. Being restless pertains to the inability to sit still, or once you do sit down for an extended period of time, you are twitching and tapping your feet as you try to get the waves of nervousness to settle. Irritability is when we grow frustrated and bothered, often by the littlest things, and cannot seem to find contentment. Irritability is often a chain reaction of feelings, because when one thing goes wrong, it seems like every subsequent thing is that much worse. Avoidance and Isolation When someone is faced with negative thoughts about themselves, as well as a fear of how others perceive them, they may begin to avoid certain situations. This avoidance can take place in various different situations, such as community gatherings, necessary appointments, events surrounding your children, and sometimes restaurants. All of these common situations are part of what we do and who we are in a community. It is the fear of being seen as less than equal or beneath others of your same peer group that can lead to these feelings. People who suffer from this fear will do what they can to avoid these situations. It may not even matter to them how many people are attending an event, just that they do not expose themselves to those feelings and thoughts. The event might have great significance, which would be the case if it was held for a child, for example. This type of event would be very important to the parent, but if the parent is suffering from toxic thoughts and is afraid of being judged by a group of people, the parent may not want to attend. The same can be said for necessary appointments, such as ones that are required to keep our minds and bodies working optimally. This can be devastating for someone suffering from mental health because this person is afraid to attend a place where there are other people capable of passing judgment. Not only are they worried about what other people will think of them, but also just knowing that they will be in the spotlight when answering questions about their ailments is frightening. One intense form of anxiety, called agoraphobia, occurs when a person will avoid situations simply because they feel like they could become trapped and not receive help when needed. One classic example of this is a person who is afraid to fly on an airplane. The root of their fear is not the fear of flight. It is that the airplane is a confined space that is secluded for a given amount of time. The person who suffers from agoraphobia feels that if something were to go wrong, there would be no way to get help for hours at a time. All of this fear and worry will continue to push a person further away from others until they are isolated. This is a vicious cycle, where in order for the person to find relief from their anxiety and fear, they must seek out help and face those very fears that are keeping them from treatment. Thankfully, with the help of cognitive behavioral therapy, people can learn techniques to change their thought processes and move past this behavior just as much as the rest outlined here in this chapter. With the techniques given in this book, 
people who are stuck in this cycle will finally be able to break free and possibly get professional help down the line as their confidence builds. Inability to perform daily activities. This behavior, unlike the other ones we've discussed already, is one that may initially go unnoticed or dismissed as a side effect. Because people who deal with anxiety are often depressed or avoid social interactions altogether, they may seem unwilling to do the things that are expected of them. This can be anything from cleaning the house to grocery shopping, and it can progress to the point where the person has a difficult time even getting out of bed. This is why it can often be seen as a side effect of the greater problem of depression or anxiety, wherein the person will feel a complete lack of purpose as they continue to fall deeper into their struggles. In addition to anxiety and depression, people with other mental disorders may eventually lose the ability to keep up with a normal daily life. These disorders, like obsessive-compulsive disorder and addiction, can lead to a person prioritizing other things above things of importance. This would mean that cleaning and cooking for the family, for example, could be the last thing on their minds. It doesn't just stop in the home, either. Lacking the desire to do what is needed or prioritizing unimportant things above others can also lead to difficulties at work and in school. This can be costly to a person who is striving toward a promotion but cannot seem to complete the tasks assigned to them. Likewise, grades can slip and failure can occur, leading a student to fall drastically behind. Facing the fear Dealing with these problematic behaviors is no easy task. You can't simply wish them away because they are rooted deeply in who you are and because of the things you've experienced. And that's perfectly fine. It is our flaws that make us human. Our ability to learn from our mistakes and grow gives us meaning and purpose in life. We worry because we want to be better and we fear because we don't want the worst to happen. This is entirely normal, and you have to give yourself the permission to allow this truth to be. You must accept that you will have good days and bad days, but they don't define you, and they certainly don't control you. While it's easier said than done, often it takes a bit of courage and the strength to face our fears in order to overcome what is causing our struggles. You should never do something that is outside of your comfort zone. But shying away from situations that bring you anxiety could lead to further isolation and more detrimental behaviors. If you can tolerate small gatherings but not large ones, try to get involved in something that you love that will not cause you the anxiety you face in larger gatherings. If, for example, you enjoy shopping at a craft store, don't feel that you have to resort to shopping online in order to get the experience without the fear. You could choose to expose yourself to this environment on a slower shopping day so that you don't feel overwhelmed like you would when the store is busy. There are many little tips and tricks like this one that can help people dealing with anxiety, and we'll review those later on in this book. For now, let's review what we've already discussed about behaviors and why our thoughts control our actions. The actions we take are a direct product of our thoughts. When we think toxic thoughts, we behave in ways that are detrimental to our overall health. Mental disorders can cause us fear and worry, which lead to avoidance and isolation. Using CBT allows us to move past the initial toxic thoughts and begin the process of recovery. Moving ahead to the next chapter, we'll discuss how our feelings and emotions can change our perception of reality. We'll go over a couple of key techniques to overcome anxiety as we learn to keep ourselves in the present. It's time to put anxiety in its place and take back control of your thoughts, even in situations where you feel like you've lost control. Chapter 4. 
How Feelings and Emotions Can Change Reality We are every bit a product of our thoughts as we are our actions. The difference between the two is clear. We are judged on our actions and how we behave because that is what the world sees. Our thoughts, however, are our own, and we bear their burden alone. When we have negative thoughts, we alone have to learn to process them and get rid of them without anyone's help. Of course, you can seek help from a professional, just as much as you can ask for help from those close to you. But the truth is, when you have a thought that you must resolve, that thought exists in your personal space, and you must deal with it personally. When our feelings and emotions come into play is during and after we process these negative thoughts, among other things. It can happen instantaneously, as we feel the weight of our negative thoughts from the moment they enter our minds. Sometimes, though, these thoughts that we allow to grow and manifest as we accept the false belief that we are not good enough will continue to affect us for hours and days. It is the emotions and feelings that stem from any form of a toxic or negative thought that directly impacts our reality in an unfavorable manner. Feelings that emerge from negativity. Feelings are an interesting thing. Our feelings are the way that we reflect our emotions and our thoughts onto the world. They are also reactive in that we respond with our feelings to outside stimuli. When we're facing stressful situations or ones that make us angry or bothered, we begin to feel boxed in and like we are losing control. This sense of chaos that we feel is not the same as an emotion, such as the anger which triggered these feelings. Of course, anger is both an emotion and a feeling, but it is the way we develop these that sets them apart. It's important to distinguish the two so that you can properly identify the root of your problem in your current situation. This can lead you to resolve what it is that is causing you to suffer. Feelings are conscious, and they often manifest because of our emotions. There are times when our feelings come about because of stimuli in the environment or something that has happened recently. In the case of negativity and the toxic thoughts that we are trying to alleviate, these feelings are ones that dampen our days. They include sadness, anxiety, disgust, and anger, to name just a few. Feelings are different from our emotions, even though they encompass the same terms. Feelings are developing in a conscious way. This simply means that we are aware of what is happening and how we are responding. Unlike an emotion, a feeling is what occurs in direct response to something that we have experienced. Emotions that emerge from negativity. Emotions are not the same as feelings, as we've already discussed, but they certainly feel every bit as real. Emotional distress that comes from an unfavorable situation, whether it be mental or physical, will manifest into feelings as well as additional negative thoughts. All of these components, emotions, feelings, and thoughts, dance around together as they create your psychological persona. You must understand each one individually to be able to grasp the root of your struggles and find solutions. Emotions are strange and mysterious, and some people can spend their entire lives trying to make sense of their own emotions. You can have the same emotions as feelings. The differences lie in how they come to life. With an emotion, you can change from content to bothered to disgusted in a matter of minutes, simply due to unseen physiological changes. This is partly why they are so mysterious to define and so frightening to understand. You may wonder if you're correct in identifying your own emotions, and you may feel like you must in order to address the root problem. The truth is, however, that some emotions arise from unexpected sources. Because of neurophysiological changes that alter and shift our psychological state, emotions are as unique as the person experiencing them. It is thought that there are thousands of different emotions that a person can experience, 
And the changes that directly drive our emotions are interconnected with our thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. How our perception of reality changes. When these different aspects of our psychological persona begin to falter, they lead to a chain reaction that pulls us out of our reality and locks us into our mental landscape. In moments like these, we find it incredibly difficult to pull ourselves away from worrisome and anxious thoughts as we slip further and further away from the present moment. This in itself is a panic attack in the simplest form. As you pull away from the tangible reality at your fingertips, you allow your thoughts to take over how you feel, which leads you to having emotions that have no connection to the reality in which you are standing. This is not limited to anxiety and panic attacks. As we face mental struggles and subsequently allow our thoughts to control us, our feelings and emotions become unsteady as we step out of the physical and enter the mental. All sorts of disorders can cause the chain reaction, including obsessive compulsive disorder, addiction, and anger issues, to name a few. The moment that we slip into deep thought, paired with our doubt and worry, we lose our grasp on what is happening before us. We begin to miss out on things in the present as the fear and anxiety continue to build within our thoughts. Soon, as we teeter back and forth between these negative thoughts that are starting to snowball, the sense of panic grows rapidly. Suddenly, we are thrust into the desire to keep up with the physical world as we struggle to catch up with what is truly happening around us. Sometimes, this anxiety that we face can lead us to see our reality in a way that it is not. We may start to feel like people are watching us and judging our every move, and these thoughts, which are not connected to our reality and are completely fabricated by our own fear, only add to the weight that we unnecessarily carry. This can lead to overcompensation and a mess of behaviors that seemingly arise out of nowhere. In this toxic environment, we are suddenly uncoordinated and restless as we feel a sense of hurry. It's as if the world has continued moving, though we have stood still. In these moments, our negative thoughts have not only stolen precious time from us, but they are also now impacting our physical well-being as well as the activities we are trying to accomplish. Cognitive behavioral therapy gives us the power to stop these negative thoughts before they have an opportunity to take over our minds and bodies. We can pull ourselves out of the panic as we root our focus into reality. Finding ways to process and remove your negative and toxic thoughts is exactly how CBT is both beneficial and dependable. CBT teaches us how to move past the traumas that have caused these toxic thoughts, as well as how to replace those thoughts with uplifting and optimistic ways of thinking. Sometimes, however, people may still deal with panic attacks and bouts of anxiety, and it's important to understand that this is part of the human condition. It doesn't mean that something is wrong with you. It's simply how people process things from time to time. Fortunately, even the heaviest anxiety attack can be evaded with some helpful techniques that teach us how to remain present as we let the self-doubt and worry dissipate. Staying present and positive during despair. Cognitive behavioral therapy allows us to find the deepest reason why we are behaving in ways we don't like. This is responsible for our lack of self-confidence, as well as our false beliefs about ourselves. Because of whatever past traumas or expectations we have of a situation, we have these reasons for doubting what we can do. Keeping yourself in the present moment and out of your head is one way of quieting the thoughts that have held on to you for too long. Let's take a look at one basic technique that can help you to resolve a panic attack before it has the chance to pull you out of reality. This method is simple and has many different styles that you can adjust to your own liking. 
It is both therapeutic and relieving, and you can practice it anytime so that you can get better at silencing your negative thoughts the second they enter your mind. The 333 method. This method of catching a panic attack just as it begins is effective because it forces you to register your environment and become one with your surroundings. In using the 333 method, you'll be identifying and naming three items in your surroundings that you can see, touch, and hear. Let's review the steps. One, the moment you feel closed in or worried, or when you get the first negative thought, take a look at the space you're in. Allow everything in your space to truly take hold of your mind. Two, identify three things that stand out to you within the space. These are items that you can clearly see. It helps if they are large or bold in one way or another. This could be an animal, a piece of furniture, a plant, or a plate of food, for example. Three. Speak these three things out loud. You don't have to be overly loud about it, especially if you feel that that could cause you embarrassment in a crowd of people, but you do need to hear yourself state these three objects. Four, as you say these things, let your eyes connect with the item as your ears registers its name. This allows you to focus on that and not whatever it is that's clouding your brain. These four steps are then repeated for the senses of touch and sound. Take your time with this technique as you identify and connect with your current environment. As I explained, allow yourself to see these things as you speak their names and, if possible, reach out and feel them. The stronger your connection to your current reality, the quicker you can get over a panic attack and resume what is most necessary and important in your current situation. The 54321 method. Similarly, the 54321 method uses the same principles as the 333 method, except that it is more detailed. There are variations of this method as well, mainly in the sequence of which senses to use. If you prefer to use this method rather than the 333 method, then you can change it as you please. 1. As with the 333 method, we begin by listing things that we can see. Again, connect with the most aesthetically pleasing and eye catching items that give you a positive feeling within your environment. This time, however, we will name five items that we can see. 2. Now we move to four items that we can hear. Again, speak these items to yourself, but out loud so that you can connect with your environment. 3. Now we list three items that we can touch. As with the five visual items, it helps to connect with things that are unique and can fully grab your attention. These three items might be things that feel soft, or they could be things that have ridges. If they're close enough for you to reach out and touch them, that will help you all the more. Four, we continue with two items that we can smell. Name two things in your immediate environment that you can smell. Strong odors such as coffee and fragrances are easy to connect with, as well as pleasing to our senses. Five, finally, we need one thing we can taste. This last item can be a little difficult depending on your situation, but even if you aren't currently tasting something, chances are you can connect to a recent taste. Maybe you just brushed your teeth and the mint is still in your mouth. Or perhaps you had toast and jam for breakfast and you can still connect with that flavor of strawberries. In addition, if you have something nearby, such as a piece of hard candy or a stick of gum, you can use those in this instance. Quick relief. 
If you find yourself in a pinch and you need relief from your toxic thoughts, simply go through your senses and pull a single item from your environment that you can connect with. This can work well when you're in a hurry and you don't have time to process every individual item that's listed in the steps above. Even if you only connect with one item for each of the three senses, similar to the 333 method, you'll still be helping yourself remain present and focused on the things in your current situation rather than your thoughts. Quality over quantity. Having an anxious moment or feeling like our thoughts are about to take over and hold us hostage is never a pleasant situation. Pulling yourself out of this moment by using the connection between your environment and your senses should be as positive as possible. If you find yourself in a situation where you cannot identify the number of items outlined in this method, don't struggle and force yourself to follow this process exactly as it's written. It is much more beneficial if you perform this process in an optimistic and positive way. Similarly, the items that you look for, as well as feel and hear in your environment, should be ones that give you joy and happiness above all else. These items shouldn't make you feel worse about the situation. They should be bringing you out of your struggles and not causing more. For example, if you're starting to feel anxious and need help getting out of your thoughts, you shouldn't try to connect with a certain food smell that you dislike just because it's there. You may have had a bad experience with this food at one point in your past, or you might simply not like the flavor, but either way, connecting yourself to the present reality by using something that has a negative impact on your life will not help you detach from your toxic thoughts. It may, if the item in question holds a significant negative value for you personally, cause you additional pain and negative thoughts. In this chapter, we've discussed how your feelings and emotions can have an impact on the reality around you. We've also gone over how those feelings and emotions can have a negative impact on your day when they are the direct result of toxic thoughts. Let's review our main points. Feelings and emotions differ because of how they are created in our brains. When anxiety causes us to have unwanted feelings and emotions, we can start to see our reality in a different way. Keeping ourselves present and mindful will help fight off an anxiety attack and remove toxic thoughts. And following the 333 method and its variations, will help you remain in your present state of mind rather than succumbing to your thoughts. Practicing and using these different forms of anxiety relief will help you as we move forward into the next chapter. We'll be looking at your past as well as the traumas that you've experienced so that we may find the root cause of your toxic and negative thinking. This is a vital step in cognitive behavioral therapy because identifying the reason for your negative thoughts will give you the ability to silence them in the future. Chapter 5. How the Past Shapes the Future Our futures are heavily influenced by how we remember the things that have happened in our past. It is in our nature to use our past experiences as a basis for our vision of the future we become familiar with certain ways and start to assume that every situation will have a similar outcome. Eventually, we easily find ourselves placing these assumptions on new situations that haven't yet happened. While this can be fun during certain circumstances, when we link something in our past that caused us trauma or suffering, we tend to assume that the same suffering will occur again under similar circumstances. This is unfortunately part of our brain chemistry as we ask the big questions of life. We want to know what would happen if we did this or that, and what would have occurred if we had done something differently. These questions are inherently human, but they do cause us suffering in and of themselves. If we weren't so focused on possible outcomes, those which are often based on assumptions and not reality, we'd be able to grasp what we're doing with a clear mind and even produce a more positive and pleasant outcome. 
Learning to Embrace Your Past Even though we all have past experiences that bring us worry or embarrassment, we shouldn't shun these moments and push them away. Everything that has happened in your life has contributed to the person you are today. You may initially believe that those memories are exactly why you're suffering, and you aren't entirely wrong. But embracing our struggles so that we can learn and grow is how we create a better future. Part of the reason why you may be developing negative thoughts, particularly due to a past trauma, is because you're looking at the trauma as something that has defeated you. I'm not dismissing the gravity of whatever it is that you've been through, but part of cognitive behavioral therapy is learning to look at the things that we see as weaknesses and recondition our brains into thinking that these are moments that have given us a reason to become stronger. Anytime we experience something that feels like a setback or that hurts us mentally or physically, we feel weaker and sometimes we feel like we are less than the person we were previously. With CBT, you learn to see these moments in a different way as you recondition your mental processes into thinking that you have not gotten weaker from your suffering. Instead, you have learned to rise up again as you continue to get stronger each day. This part of cognitive behavioral therapy is not an easy one for those who have suffered a great deal. But even the most monumental struggle can be tackled with small steps and determination. Here, we'll discuss a plan that you can apply to almost any situation so that you can begin to overcome the negative thoughts that are developing from your past traumas. Identify the trauma. The first step in this plan includes identifying the past trauma that is causing you the negative thoughts and the behaviors that you wish to stop. Let's look at an example to be clear on how to handle this. Let's say that I am a person who gets anxiety from grocery shopping. I know that this could stem from the fact that a couple of years ago, I had a panic attack at a grocery store because it was overwhelmed with shoppers during the beginning phases of the coronavirus. During this experience, let's say that I had a cart full of items that would likely take me 20 minutes to check out, and that I was in a long line and also had my children with me. For some people, grocery shopping can be a stressful experience filled with anxiety. It can cause some of the most relaxed people to grow frustrated as they wait their turn for a long time. For other people, shopping can be an exhilarating and fun experience. These people may enjoy getting out and being amongst others as they socialize and see the new trends in different stores. In my example, this event that I could have experienced a couple of years ago would certainly make shopping difficult for me going forward. Since I would know exactly what it is that could cause me to feel anxious when doing my normal grocery shopping, I might look back on this and evaluate what it is that may cause my anxiety and what part of that experience might now weigh on my future. Evaluate the situation. Our second step involves this evaluation. I can now review the entire event of my shopping experience to understand what it is that could make me feel anxious and worried and these revelations will help me identify how to best avoid the anxiety in the future. Continuing with my example, I can say that being out at a public place where many people were packed into a store would be a good reason for why I started to feel anxious. I could easily get overwhelmed by everybody's voices and their opinions. During this trip, however, let's just say I wouldn't be too focused on this new virus just yet. The source of my anxiety during this event would mainly be the conditions and the situation I found myself in. In addition to the overwhelming amount of people surrounding me, I would also be responsible for my young children as they grow impatient during the wait. This would become stressful for any parent who is already overwhelmed. Young children who have to wait for an extended amount of time do not usually make the experience any easier. And for the sake of this example, we'll say that they were hungry and irritable as we inched our way through the checkout line. 
Finally, the third thing that could cause me to feel anxious during this event and subsequently increase my fear to the point where my heart would pound and my hands would get clammy is the moment I reached the checkout. This is when the overwhelming environment would hit me hardest, as now the people behind me are waiting just as I had for someone to get through their things and get on their way. I would feel as though all eyes are on me and that I must hurry and not make any mistakes, or I would hold up the line and make others very angry. This entire shopping event would continue to escalate until I felt as though I had no escape from the fear and the worry that were overtaking me. Before this event occurred, I would have no reason to believe that shopping would cause me anxiety. Going to the store would not have raised a red flag to me. As the shopping trip unfolds, each moment would get more and more stressful until my turn would come at the checkout. This is the height of the entire situation, and as I said before, I would grow panicky as I'd feel like others were watching my every move. No, this wasn't a weak moment. This type of event could very likely leave me with assumptions as to how my future shopping trips would go. This situation, like many stress-provoking situations that people deal with every day, cannot be avoided. Sometimes the simplest things that we do can cause us the most suffering. In this example, it is shopping for groceries, an essential part of life that could cause anxiety and fear. Now, it's easy to envision how someone who has gone through something as basic as a shopping trip could find future shopping trips sources of dread. When a person who has been through something like this begins to think about heading to the store because they must in order to survive, the same feelings and emotions that occurred during the past trauma start flooding in. This is where cognitive behavioral therapy goes to work. In our third step, we take what we have evaluated and learned and we start to change our way of thinking in regard to our initial past traumatic event. For our example, I would need to learn to look at shopping in a different way, but not just that. I would also need to go back and revisit the moment where I felt weak and like I had no way out of my fear so that I can view what I currently call a weakness in a more positive light. I would no longer be able to think back on that event and tell myself that it was a terrible moment and that I felt it would never end. Instead, I would need to shift my focus to the positives that came from that event. I know that some events seem to have no positives at all, but often that is only because we are so focused on the negative. And if you wish to think positively, you must completely demolish the negative. There is no room for toxicity in your future. For my shopping example, I could look back on it and be proud that I had helped my children behave and stay calm in an overwhelming situation. I could also be grateful that I may have made it to the store and purchased the items that I needed before they ran out. Finally, I would have completed the entire shopping experience and finished checking out because I would have been strong and stuck with it. These are all things to be proud of and to think of positively. This very first step in retraining your brain to think about your past traumas and your assumed weaknesses in a different light is monumental in your overall therapy. Simply addressing the things that you view as setbacks and changing your mindset so that you see them as opportunities for growth and change will give you new strength in similar situations. We'll continue this conversation in the following chapter as we go further toward retraining your thought processes. We'll discuss techniques that will help you to replace your negative thoughts with more positive ones, regardless of the mental disorders and struggles you're dealing with. For now, let's quickly review how our past has shaped our future. Our memories of past experiences provide us with assumptions to how the future will play out. These assumptions stick with us regardless of whether they are positive or negative. Our past struggles can be broken down and evaluated so we can understand exactly why we create negative thoughts. 
And changing your viewpoint of your past experiences can change how you view your future. Let's head into the next chapter where we can go over some helpful techniques that will allow you to start living your life to the fullest without the worry and the fear that comes with anxiety as well as other mental disorders. With the help of cognitive behavioral therapy, these new and positive thoughts that you will create will allow you to end the behaviors that are only causing you more trauma. Helping the world to heal. At this moment, there are millions of people across the planet who are in need of healing. They may not seem like they are in distress, and they may never ask for help, but they, just like you, are aware that their lives could be better if they knew how to resolve their negative thoughts. This is where I must pause and ask for your help so that others may find this book and get the advice and the help that they need. You are the key to helping so many other people find the solutions that they not only need, but also deserve in order to live a happier and healthier life. If there is just one thing in this book that has helped you get through your day with a little more positivity, then I ask that you share that with other potential listeners in an honest review. Five minutes is all it takes to brighten someone's day. My main goal with this book is to share the positivity of cognitive behavioral therapy and to let people see just how beneficial it is to our overall way of life. I can only spread this message so far, but it is you as the person who is experiencing these benefits that can help tell others how important CBT truly is. Helping other people provides us with gratitude and we end up making the whole world a better place. Remember that we all experience anxiety and some people have a really hard time asking for help as they fall deeper and deeper into depression. These people need a book like this more than ever because it can help them to learn to heal in the privacy of their own homes. I ask that you take a few minutes to let someone else know how wonderful cognitive behavioral therapy has been for you. The honest review that you write today could impact thousands of people over time. And that fact alone brings so much positivity with it that it's hard to put into words. I thank you in advance. Chapter 6 Retraining Your Brain We've now reached a point where we can address the negative thoughts you're having at the moment they arise, and thus we can begin on the path toward better behavior and positive thinking. We've analyzed what the root of your behavioral and cognitive struggles is, and we've identified the behaviors that are unwanted, specifically due to a past traumatic event. We'll go over a few different processes that will enable you to redefine your thoughts and subsequently, the behaviors that are impacting your life in a negative way. These different processes have been clinically tested and shown to be effective, especially in the areas of anxiety, depression, anger issues, and obsessive compulsive disorder. That isn't to say that these techniques cannot be applied to other mental disorders, as well as unwanted behaviors that arise from various different causes. You may even want to employ some of these techniques if you're suffering from symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder, as well as addiction, to name a couple. Before beginning any of these techniques, make sure that you are comfortable and are well-informed on how the processes work so that you don't get into a situation that could cause you additional anxiety. If at any point you begin to feel overwhelmed, or if you believe the techniques are not working as well as you would like, take a break and return to the exercises and techniques once you've had time to process what you've already accomplished. Remember that even the smallest amount of progress can make a huge impact on your daily life. While we've already discussed that there are numerous different mental illnesses that can make you behave unfavorably in your daily life, for the sake of these mental exercises, I'll focus mostly on anxiety. 
This is because anxiety is such a prevalent problem in our society, and everybody can relate to anxiety on a certain level, and apply the techniques outlined here to resolve the discomfort associated with this disorder. Visualization therapy. Visualization therapy is the method of mentally putting yourself in a position that you can use to train yourself to respond in a more favorable way when faced with anxiety. During this technique, you will practice visualizing a situation that would likely cause you anxiety or another form of mental distress as you work through the experience with a positive outcome. Throughout this technique, you will be in the comfort of your home or a similar place that brings you happiness and does not cause any form of distress. Following these steps, you'll gain better control over your responses to situations and events that would normally cause you anxiety. Practicing this technique on a routine basis will also strengthen your mind as well as your ability to handle tough situations over time. You'll feel that, within just a few practices, you are able to make it through your day with less anxiety and an improved overall sense of calm. The first step to visualization is to find a comfortable place where we can be undisturbed. This could be in your bedroom or in your living room, but it must be a place where you are free from distractions. You'll want to turn off your phone and any other device that could pull your attention away from the exercise. In addition, if there are other people in your home who could distract you, either intentionally or not, it's best to find a place where you can be alone. For a majority of this technique, you'll need to relax and have your eyes closed. For this reason, you should choose a comfortable place to sit or lay down, such as a sofa or a bed. If you found a comfortable spot and you are free from distractions, you can begin. Envision yourself in a situation that you know would cause you anxiety. Relating to my example of shopping, I would use this technique to help strengthen my future shopping experiences and reduce my stress. So, for this step, I would be focusing on a busy shopping store with lots of people and noise. As you visualize the situation, the first thing you want to do is be aware of the way you are feeling and the thoughts that are starting to filter in. For my shopping example, I could say that I'm starting to feel overwhelmed and that my first thoughts would be along the lines of, I can't do this, or this is going to take forever. These thoughts would come quickly as I would begin to feel more and more weighed down by the amount of chaos in the environment. Stop yourself right there. With that very first thought, even if it's a simple, oh God, you have to catch those words and force yourself to think and say something more positive. I know what you're thinking. It's easier said than done. You aren't wrong, but you are more than capable of putting in this work so that you can have a happier, more productive life. It will take practice before you learn to change how you think about certain situations, but that is exactly what cognitive behavioral therapy is about. That is, in fact, how all therapy works. It takes dedication and willpower to reach your goals and truly retrain the way you think. This step is crucial to finding that success at the end of your journey. So even if you feel like this won't work for you or that it's easier said than done, give it a try. Over time, it will get easier and it will take less effort. Continuing with my example of shopping, Instead of me instantly thinking about how I can't possibly make it through this experience, I will stop myself and say something positive or reinforcing, such as, I've got this. I can go further by reminding myself that I have done this hundreds of times, and during those times, everything turned out fine. I can repeat to myself, I've got this, as I continue to connect with the memories of times when I did my shopping and the entire event went well. Furthermore, I can remember the positive feelings that I gained from these good shopping experiences, such as confidence in knowing that I accomplished something that has been difficult for me, and even that I went and bought myself something that made me feel good. 
Visualization is incredibly helpful in practicing situations that would normally cause you overwhelming anxiety and stress. During these practices, you are able to better control your thoughts and feelings as you take your time to process each one without the pressures of real life. If you start to feel overwhelmed, it is easy for you to simply open your eyes and clear your mind as you process what has already happened. This allows you to deconstruct each moment, as well as the overall event, all while encouraging yourself to replace those negative thoughts one by one. Socratic Questioning Socrates was a Greek philosopher who lived during the 4th century BC. His teachings are world-renowned and have been attributed to democracy, studies in logic and reasoning, as well as the necessity for balanced arguments. As a philosopher, Socrates presented the public with many questions about humanity. We can now benefit from his way of thinking as we analyze our own human nature and our thought processes. With the Socratic questioning method of CBT, we ask ourselves certain questions to evaluate our thoughts and feelings about the situations that are causing us distress. With the following questions, you will be able to look at your thoughts in a different way as you begin to analyze the validity of each feeling you're experiencing. This method is also great for helping you remove yourself from the situation and look at it from an outside standpoint which is something that can help you gauge just how important or urgent the situation truly is. Start with a single thought. Write down on a piece of paper the thought that you are having troubles with. This is the negative thought you were having as you tried to do something that you felt should be more comfortable than it truly is. This is the main thought that is often causing you distress in situations that you can't avoid. Explain your evidence. Continuing on the piece of paper, write out an explanation about why you have this thought. This could be because something similar has happened to you in the past, or that you have an assumption about something that seems likely to happen, even if it hasn't. You should also include an explanation as to why it would not happen. This is a time to be balanced about this thought you are having. Don't let the negatives outweigh the positives in this explanation. Write the reasoning out. Here is where you will begin to examine whether or not the thought is based on reality or simply on your feelings. You'll want to be honest about where this thought has come from so that you can tackle it head-on and solve this problem. Ask yourself if there are facts backing your thoughts. Are you, instead, feeling overwhelmed or uncertain about something, and is that the basis for your thought? Remove your assumptions. Are you basing your thought on feelings alone because of your perceived idea of what will happen? Or have you experienced something that makes this thought a true possibility? A lot of times, our stress and anxiety can come from our assumptions of something, and they often have little to do with the true reality that is around us. Looking at everything. Now that you have gone through your thoughts in more detail, you can begin to evaluate how they are affecting your feelings as well, as well as whether or not they have basis in reality. You can see that, from an outside perspective, your negative thoughts are most likely a fabrication of an assumption that you have about a certain situation. These assumptions can cause great stress and high anxiety because we believe wholeheartedly that the outcome we are most worried about will come true. By looking through the details of your thoughts, however, you'll begin to see that many times these negative thoughts do not have real meaning in our reality. If you use this technique on a regular basis, especially for thoughts that are persistent and happen to be routine in your daily life, you might even pick up on patterns as to why you are having these thoughts. You may realize that you are associating the possibility of a worst-case scenario 
with something that you heard about but have never experienced, for example. For something like this, you can begin to change your thoughts toward the positive by reminding yourself that it hasn't happened to you. Journaling to Recondition Journaling your thoughts to help you recondition the way that you think and feel about certain situations is a little bit like the Socratic method. You will write down how you are feeling and what you are thinking, just like we did in the step above, except now you will actively work toward replacing these feelings and thoughts with a new and positive outcome. When you journal, you may not focus as much on all the individual details as you did during the Socratic method. What you want to do with this technique is to replace the thoughts and feelings that are causing a negative impact on your life with positive ones that you wish could be true. Journaling will help you in two ways as you begin to understand exactly how to replace one thought with another. The first way that journaling can help you recondition your brain into thinking more positively is by helping you to recognize a negative thought as you become more comfortable with replacing it with a better one. Let's practice this so that we can better understand the method. If I, for example, am having an anxious thought about attending a social event, then I could take a moment to write down this thought and the outcome that it is implying. Let's say that I'm nervous about attending the social gathering because I feel insecure about my appearance. The thought that I have is that people will judge me and find me unattractive. The outcome that this thought is implying is that I will go home alone and still be single, even though I'm attending the gathering to hopefully meet someone I can date. Overall, my thought is leading me to believe that I will remain alone, which is a fear of many people. With this thought written down, as well as its implied outcome, I can now turn my attention to a better thought and a much more favorable outcome. Writing this down alongside my original thought, I would say that I think that the people attending will not pay attention to my appearance as much as they will my intellect. In this example, we will say that I am confident about my intelligence and that I believe that the people at the gathering will enjoy my conversations. The proposed outcome of this is that I will find someone who values me for something I am proud of. Instead of focusing on something that often causes me anxiety, I will put forth every effort to change this thought into a more positive one that reflects something that I am proud of and confident about. Now that I can see another possibility to how my night will go, I will already have gained the desire to attend and I will have shifted my focus from the negatives into the positives. With more practice, I can apply this method to almost any aspect of my life. If I'm not able to write down my thoughts and feelings as I process through different scenarios, I can always open my phone and write a note to myself so that I feel better about the situation I'm in. In addition, I could take a moment to myself and step outside of the party or go to the restroom. And while I'm there, I can think my thoughts out loud as I work through a better outcome and replace my toxic thoughts with more productive ones. Facing the what-if question It might initially seem counterintuitive to force yourself to think about the worst-case scenario. But when you can do this in a comfortable setting where you feel safe and you can process your thoughts and feelings in a healthy way, learning to overcome the what-ifs can be greatly liberating. When we ask ourselves a question that begins with, what if, what we are truly doing is pushing ourselves to the limits to see how bad things could truly be. Nobody likes to face bad stuff. Just the thought alone can give someone anxiety. This, however, is exactly how we retrain our brains to overcome these questions. Anytime we are about to go somewhere or talk to someone, we may get a hint of the what-if questions. But there are many times when they flow right through our thoughts and don't seem to bother us. There are moments, however, when these questions seem to stick and stay with us 
as we ask deeper questions about the possibilities of whatever we are facing. From a comfortable place that brings you happiness and positivity, you can face these what-if questions head-on as you process your thoughts and feelings. And if you feel uncomfortable or start to overthink a situation, you can easily stop the practice and do something else to take your mind off of it. Unlike facing the possibilities of a worst-case scenario in real life, when we can't stop to allow ourselves the time to understand our feelings and thoughts, in this exercise, you are in control. You have the right to stop at any moment. And you should feel great about even the smallest amount of practice because with just a little bit of time each day, you'll begin to notice a change in how you handled these dreaded thoughts. Reconstructing our thoughts. We've discussed some interesting concepts in this chapter as we looked at the different techniques used in retraining our brain. Sometimes it takes trial and error before you find what works best for you, and some people do well by using multiple techniques as they continue to improve the way they think. Let's review a few of the main points that help in the reconstruction of our thoughts. Visualization therapy allows you to put yourself in a mentally constructed image of a situation that would cause you stress and anxiety. Here, you can work your way through this situation as you practice overcoming the negative thoughts and feelings that you were having. Socratic questioning is a method that allows us to step outside of our thoughts as we logically understand them and where they come from. We learn whether they are based on reality or pure assumptions, all while we pick them apart at the root. Journaling your thoughts allows you to identify what is negative as you replace it with something more favorable. Here, we look not only at the thoughts you were having, but the possible outcomes that those thoughts are implying. In a controlled environment, you can face your what-if questions to better understand how bad a certain situation can truly become. Through this, you may realize that your worst-case scenario is highly unlikely to occur. We've reviewed a lot of information regarding cognitive behavioral therapy throughout this book. You've come a long way to identify your toxic thoughts, as well as the detrimental behaviors that are a direct product of these thoughts. This is a time to be proud of yourself, as you've taken many steps in the right direction toward a positive and healthy lifestyle. Now that we have this information, we can head into our final chapter as we look at the things that you can do to improve your response to cognitive behavioral therapy. These new practices are not only beneficial to your mental health, but they teach you skills that will help you throughout many different aspects of your life. As this final step in CBT, we will identify the things that can help you further on your journey while you continue to grow and adapt to a healthier and happier lifestyle. Each one of us has the skills to take CBT to the next level and heal from these past traumas that have conditioned us to behave poorly. Don't doubt yourself here, even if you don't initially recognize what you're capable of. It is often hard to see our own positive attributes when they are buried under such heavy negative thoughts. It's time to discover your skills and learn some new ones as we put together all that we have learned about CBT. Chapter 7. Evaluating and Learning Healthy Skills This chapter is a positive one that will show you just how capable you are in living a happy, anxiety-free life. Here, we will discuss a few things that can help you truly make the most of cognitive behavioral therapy, and you may find some new techniques that you haven't thought of before. Let's look at this part of your journey as a reflective moment. Strengthening your mentality. We'll begin by discussing a few key techniques and skills that will allow you to strengthen your mind as you continue to look at the positives in life. Practicing yoga and meditation 
are two wonderful ways that you can learn to become mindful and present in who you are and where you are. When we practice meditation, we learn to clear our minds and control our thoughts. Even just a few moments a day can help you learn to identify your negative thoughts before they have a chance to take hold of you. Being mindful and aware through meditation teaches us to apply those same peaceful techniques to our moments of stress. This also provides us with discipline and self-control. In the case of yoga, we learn to breathe in rhythm with our bodies as we slow down our movements and become present in our surroundings. This can have a huge impact on your daily life, especially when you are handling stressful moments that require your attention and urgency. Yoga is also physically therapeutic as it helps us improve our circulation as well as our flexibility both of which provide us with a calm sense of relaxation. Even simple stretches can help relieve stress from your muscles as you take a moment for yourself. Strengthening your sociability. Sometimes it is the social aspect of our lives that can cause us anxiety as well as other mental disorders. This can stem from us being worried that people are judging us or we have an overwhelming desire to please the people that we interact with. Social anxiety is a well-known form of anxiety that can lead to seclusion and isolation, both of which cause people to lose their quality of life. When using cognitive behavioral therapy to overcome your social anxiety issues, it's often easier to take things in small steps. Many of us have the skills necessary to overcome social anxiety with the use of CBT, but our negative thoughts keep our brains distracted and we cannot help ourselves in the moments that we most need. Let's review a few key skills that you most likely already use. You only need to be aware of these skills and soon you'll be feeling more confident and comfortable. Giving someone a compliment might initially seem like it is only helping the person you are speaking to, but in fact, when we make other people feel good about themselves, we also feel better about ourselves. It is our human nature to feel a physiological reward after we see that we have helped someone feel better about themselves. Small compliments can go a long way. In addition, helping someone to do something that they are struggling with can have the same effect. These acts help our anxiety because we are receiving a boost of dopamine, which is the brain's feel-good chemical. This is exactly what gives us that physiological reward, and it is responsible for providing us with internal happiness. Practice these skills in small steps by giving someone a compliment at least once a day. It can be something very small, such as how you like someone's hairstyle. And it can be done in passing, even at the grocery store. This might be something that you do on a routine basis already, and it's most likely giving you a boost of happiness when you do. Strengthening your body. Just like with yoga, regular exercise can help you manage your anxiety and stress levels by releasing endorphins and other feel-good chemicals. There are many types of physical exercise that allow you to move around and stretch out your body to get these chemicals flowing. Aside from the physiological benefits of exercising, when we move around on a routine basis, our bodies get stronger and more flexible, and this can help us withstand the stresses that we deal with on a daily basis. When our bodies are not achy or feeling fatigued, we are able to endure more, both physically and mentally. We also gain self-confidence about our self-image when we feel good on the inside, something that comes directly from a healthier, active lifestyle. You may discover that, through exercise, you're feeling less bloated and less irritable, simply because you're actively moving your body. These movements, even simple ones like walking or doing yoga can improve your circulation and your digestive health. And these can allow your body to heal from injuries quicker than if you live a sedentary lifestyle. And as a bonus, 
Getting up and moving around gives you a sense of accomplishment, which adds even more confidence and removes anxiety. You might already be doing some of these exercises, but even if you aren't, it's easy to start something simple and add it to your morning routine. In just a few short minutes every day, you can count these benefits in your overall therapeutic journey. Finally, being more active and more aware of how your body works and moves may make you want to eat healthier. Eating quality foods where you gain the nutrition that you need can help you sleep better as well as sustain your energy longer throughout the day. Sometimes we get anxious and bothered simply because our diets are lacking certain vitamins and nutrients, or because we're hungry and it's hard to focus on something when our body is telling us that we need to seek sustenance. With all of these different additional techniques and skills, you can bring your cognitive behavioral therapy full circle and begin living a life that you are happy about and proud of. Finding which skills you want to focus on is all about trial and error. If you feel that you are anxious when socializing, remember to take baby steps. Likewise, if you get overwhelmed when exercising, remember to do something simpler and gentler. You may also want to involve mental exercises, such as reading and puzzles, to help you sharpen your control over those pesky thoughts. In closing, you should be truly proud of yourself for making it all the way through to the end of this book. I hope that you've gained some useful knowledge and that you can apply it to your everyday life as you continue to become the best version of yourself. I want nothing more than to help people find the positives in their lives. And if you can apply some of the techniques discussed here, you're well on your way to living that healthy and happy life that you so eagerly want and deserve. Remember that everyone has the ability to find happiness and be content with who they are, but sometimes we need a little help. If you feel that you need professional help, do not hesitate to find someone qualified to help you heal from whatever it is that keeps you suffering. Remain mindful and present in everything you do and continue to motivate yourself even in your hardest moments. Stop every toxic thought in its tracks and continue to practice this until it becomes natural and thoughts that torment you are finally silenced.